Hello and welcome along and welcome to this, our brand new series here on the Valley of the Old Farm. Uh, we are doing Seasons from Scratch on here. We own none of this at the moment. Uh, so today we're going to be getting set up. We're going to end up, I think, with an absolutely massive, massive loan on here. Um, simply because we want to base ourselves out of the main farm here. And to get that is a cost of uh, 599,097. Uh, so yeah, not a cheap start to this. Uh, we're going to immediately have to borrow money uh, to get ourselves moving. Uh, we are going to, but the reason, the reason I want this area is because we have all of the animal stuff. So we're going to be getting chickens, uh, sheep and cows on here to keep us busy. So, uh, yeah, let's get that done. Let's let's get... Uh, I'm going to borrow to get us initially set it up. Uh, 200,000. So, we'll add 200,000 onto here. We're probably going to end up borrowing more today. And that is because if we want to get the cows especially, those are going to cost us. So, let's buy our main farm, uh, which here is this. So, buy that quite a large area but it only has one small field on it so we are going to have to get other fields around here and uh, and probably i think we're going to use the leasing mod to do most of these and just get everything around us and, and expand around the farm here um because that's going to be useful so uh but all today is all about getting ourselves set up with the animals uh so let's buy ourselves some animals so we know roughly where we're going with this um if we come here to the chickens, oh yeah, I should say, now you can see we've got all the animal pens here and the house. So none of this was visible before we bought this area. We're now going to buy uh, some of these. So we what, we got 400, we can go up to 400 chickens. What I'm going to do is we're going to have a similar setup to the one we had on Charwell. Where we're going to get good eggs uh if we can this bird of choice of eggs are your top priorities right so what we want to do is we want to get the white leghorns and we're going to get a hundred of the white leghorns so it's going to be um what 500 pounds to do this whoops so let's get uh let's hold this down get a hundred of these which again is only going to cost us five hundred pounds. No fee for getting them, and we're going to give two roosters. So the idea is that we start with uh, with a hundred. We only pay for a hundred by putting two roosters in. We end up with four hundred because our chickens breed. So we'll confirm that. 102 with two roosters. Perfect. So we're going to need to get some feed for them. So we'll do that uh, almost straight off. Chickens everywhere. Uh, then we need to go up and do the sheep. Uh, now I want to get probably... We want to get a good all-rounder sheep. I want to get something that's not only going to produce wool, but is also going to produce, uh, produce lambs for us. So we're going to do lambs on this map as well. So we come into here, and I think our best bet, looking at these, a large breed that grows moderately fast, has moderate production, and requires a medium amount of feed, relatively prolific, and good for 20 to 40 kilogram lambs. Uh, so two, 50 to 85 pounds are what we're looking to sell the Dorsets at. Um, merinos are good for uh, wool production, but only wool production, so we don't want to do that. Uh, the Suffolks are good, um, grows extremely fast, produces a moderate amount of wool, requires a lot of feed as an animal, is prolific and slow maturing, good for 100 to 140 pound lambs. So we make more money off these. It's, actually, I, I'm, I'm very interested in the Suffolks. I think um, uh, maybe a mix of the Suffolks and the Dorsets would be a good idea. Uh, and then finally we've got the Dorper. Uh, Produces no wool, but good to 85, 100 pound lambs. So I think the Suffolks, we're going for maximum profit from the sheep. 
uh, and we've got plenty of grass fields around us the Suffolks are going to be a good breed for us to go with so let's uh, let's grab some of those I'm only going to grab about half of them so I'm going to grab 40 Suffolk sheep and we'll see how much that is going to cost us a lot more than the chickens I would guess there we go uh, move one back uh, so that is going to be uh, only 23,000 for that, including the transport. That is good. Uh, so that is uh, that is a good amount of money for the sheep. So move those. Oh, no. I meant to confirm that. There we go. So there are our sheep. And then finally, the cows. So what we're going to be doing today is trying to get all of these fed. Uh, and we're going to get ourselves our first tractor to work on this. Uh, we're going to have to buy some feed initially. But we need to find out where the cow purchase point is. It is here. There we go. Um, and on here we are. So the cows are not going to pay off for the first year, unfortunately. Um, but we want something that produces, again, we want a good all-rounder, something that produces a good amount of milk and a good amount of calves. So, uh, good price at market, no. So it's going to be either the air shears or the whole scenes. Uh, the air shears, uh, low feed consumption, price per head are both good and worth in local, low milk production uh, versus the whole scenes, which is the queen of milk production. Requires a lot of speed expensive to buy, but produces the most milk. So, a good all-rounder really is going to be the airshare, I think. A low feed consumption and price per head are... Now, this is the thing. I don't know whether that is the case. So, we're going to get... Um, I think we're going to get about 20 cows. Uh, I think we'll go with the Holsteins. I'm not sure we'll make any money from um, calves on this. But I want to produce the most milk I can. So let's get some of those. Uh, so 20 of these is going to be our start for the cows. Uh, and 43,000. So by far our most expensive purchase so far. But uh, confirm that. And we have some cows. Perfect. Right, so that leaves us with 33,000. We are going to have to borrow another 100,000, I think, for the next bit. So we'll do that. What we will do is get a good tractor that we can do around the yard for sorting these animals. And to that end, uh, we're going to go into the small tractors here. And I think uh, these classic masses here are our best bet. Now, what I want to do is they're all around about the same size. I think that I'm going to go for one I haven't used on any map so far, uh, which is this. It's the two-wheel drive at Massey Ferguson. Uh, it should do, do us great, this. Uh, configuration, uh, one of the things I like about it is it has the ability to put weights on the front, uh, so we can do that. We're not doing that immediately. Uh, we have a choice of Trelleborg or Knockin wheels. We can put weights on the rear tyres, so I'm going to do that because we're going to be doing a lot of uh, lifting today. No front fenders because I'm, I'm not a fan of front fenders. Um, obviously, no global positioning system just wouldn't be on this tractor, uh, really. And then I'm going to go for a 3080. It's 43,500, so it adds uh, 8,000 or 7,500 to our price, but gives us 105 horsepower to work with, which should be great. And then we want the front loader attacher on as well, because we are definitely going to be using the front loader on this. So we want to buy that. Yes. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to give some water to all of our animals. Now, I have researched the water tankers around. Uh, we're going to get, given the uh, size of, uh, of the, the amount of stuff we need to to do water for and because i want to take milk with it as well we're going to get this universal tanker uh stainless steel body i like and uh, we're gonna go stainless steel wheels so it's nice and stainless steel all the way around uh configuration is universal brand is lizard and the decals black perfect so fifteen thousand six hundred for our tank as well 
Uh, and then on top of that, we also want to get a front loader. Uh, we will go with the FZ30. Not going for a very big front loader. I think that will work on that. We'll go with the standard color as well. So we will, uh, no, let's let's put it in a massy red. Let's go with the massy red on that. Yes, we want to purchase that. Uh, and we're going to bring a bucket back initially. Now we have a few uh, truces on the bucket. 7,000, uh, that's, oh, we got those ones. But I think I'm going to go with one of these Flegel ones for 18, yeah, this one here. Uh, we'll go with that as well. So that will do us as well by that. And that is our tractor and our front loader. So this is our first trip to the shop. Now we can reset stuff and bring it out and it will reset at the yard. So there is that as a choice. Uh, initially, I'm looking though to uh, do this uh, and, and to drive back and forth. I wanna, we, I, I plan to run this at 10 times most of the time and not really running below that. So uh, we'll see how we go with that. But, whoops back on because we've got to manually attach this there we go and get this back to the yard so we're going to have to put a water tank in the yard and i'll explain why when we get back down there so we're back down at the farm and uh yeah i will show you why we're going to need to put a water tank in i have not been able to get these to work so far so I tried a couple of times and uh just just not been able to get it to work uh, and it's not the trailer. It seems to be something else that's preventing this. But if I back up here to the water trough with this open, try and refill, nothing happens. And there's a couple of water troughs around here like this. Uh, I have, uh, now I, I have checked. There does seem to be a trigger around them. It just doesn't seem to want to work either with this or the standard water tank. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a water tank in. And it should be up here. Uh, I, the spots, there's, there's several places where I think it would fit uh, quite well. We've got uh, a few bits and pieces around here. But the best place I've found for it is over this way here. There's, uh, there's a nice little patch of grass just here where we could put it. So I'm going to place it here. Let's uh, grab our placeables, miscellaneous, there we go, water station, uh, and yeah, we could, we've got a nice area, what I, one thing I like about this map is we've got a nice big placeable area here, but you can see the only other place, no, couldn't really go there, can't really go there, now I'm going to need to do one alteration before we go, and that is to pop into the global company mod, and activate the extended placeable. That is the basically the place anywhere mod. Uh, it's part of Global Company, and uh, and yeah, we can put this here. Let's switch this round. Get this nice and close over here. So this is then this is then nicely out of the way. Gonna. Oh no! Want to push it down as far as I can. And get it as close in, and there we go. So that has got that there rather nicely. We've got it uh, low and close to the barn as we can get it. And that cost us as little as we uh, as it could, so that's good. That then fills up with water, which is great. And we're able to get our all of our animals safely watered. So trailer is full close it up and uh, and yeah hopefully this is enough water to do I think both of our uh, both our sheep uh, and our cows I don't think any of our other animal I don't think our chickens require water no so we need to give water to both our cows and our sheep we're initially I, I, I want to give straw to the cows early on 
one of the ways we're going to keep making money around here is I think we're going to put a small BGA in at the farm. Uh, that way, uh, we've got a couple of options. There's a there's a small BGA mod, which is about 125,000, I think. Uh, and a uh, and the BGA mod that is also 100, uh, 150,000 from the global company mod. Uh, both of those would be good choices for us. There we go. And reverse it up. But I need to make sure I have that 150 available before I do that. It's it's 400,000 for the uh, the actual BGA on this map, so it's not something that's affordable to us. We can empty out the water into the trough here, and that will go well. And all done. There we go. Let's head out. So we've still got 85%. So that's good. Uh, expecting the cows to do okay from this now. I'm not a huge fan of this gate. There are a few little errors and things around this map. I'm hoping that uh, a later release is going to fix. Uh, my worry is, if a later issue fixes these, I'm hoping there's no bigger stuff that, uh, that also will need to be fixed by it. Because if there is, we may end up sort of doing mad transfers and things like that and sounds on gates and things like that seem to be a little bit off uh, I'd expect the metal gate sounds on those this is one of those maps I actually didn't do a first look on this uh, which is an odd way for me to approach a map where is uh, we'll go into the field I think yeah we need to go into the field uh, so I've not done a first look around this map and uh, yeah, I'm, I wanted to I wanted to see what it was like without it. Uh, so far, it's not too bad. Uh, as I said, there are some small bits that uh, that I don't like, uh, like the wrong sounds on those gates. That's not too difficult to fix. That there we go. Uh, and uh, and that gate in the uh, in the sheep field. But otherwise, nice. I do love the look of this map. I mean, this map just undulates it really does there's not a i don't think there's really a flat area on it right is this the cow trough for the water can i refill their water from here let's have a look shall we does this refill the cow's water yes it does perfect so yeah all good there and that will empty out in a moment. They are good. Cows take a lot more water than the sheep. So this isn't surprising. And then we can go and get rid of our water trailer and get our next item. There we are. The cows have taken all of that. So that begs the question, how much more do they need? Not much. So they will take a full tank of water from this. So that is good to know. That is important to know. Uh, this tank will also take um, uh, this tank will also take milk. So when we eventually get milk, it'll take a year on here to get milk. Uh, but when we eventually get milk, uh, we will be able to transport it with this. This at the moment though is just for the water. Uh, so we've got uh, that. Uh, now we, what we want to do is we want to head up to the uh, back up to the shop, I think. And get ourselves a new. Uh, we want to get ourselves a flatbed trailer, some feed, and some feed for these animals, uh, just to get them through until we can get some grass cut and get our cell, our teeth into some fields on here. So I am gonna. I'm actually gonna put the water trailer over this way, but I will see you back at the shop in a moment. So we're back up at the shop here, and everything's collected from the rear. We're going to need a bale spike and a uh, and a pallet fork for this next bit. We're going to need time to get uh, stuff back to the farm as well. So let's have a look under animals, which we missed. There we go. Uh, and I think we're going to end up with one of these warsies. Uh, so that might be a good thing for us to get at the moment. Uh, what I want is, though... 
It's not under here. It must be under flatbeds or yeah, low loaders maybe. Uh, we have got the Trex, and now uh, this is a, this is a nice piece of kit. Uh, would do us pretty well on this farm, I think maybe. Uh, but I, I knowing I've got that is actually really good. What I want does not seem to be about here at the moment, which is interesting. Uh. But I thought it was under bailing technology. Maybe it is under bailing technology. Yes, yes. I went into the wrong place. I'm not under animals, under bailing technology. We got the Johnson flatbed for 1500, which is a really good, really nice trailer. Um, we can get that. We can get that in the metal. Or we can get in the Massey Ferguson red. Uh, so that would be, uh, that would be good there. Uh, the alternatives are the Marshall, which isn't configurable uh, for just 500 pound less, or this old bale trailer, refurbished flatbed, um, which, uh, yeah, the rim colors are, it's just silver. Uh, I'd go metal with what we have here, and, uh, and yeah, just uh, grab that as an old bale trailer. We might just leave the lizards on it. Uh, French registration because we are in France and uh, and then the design we can either have a front a rear or uh, and a toolbox no options on at the moment we can always add them later but this keeps our cost down so we will buy this there we go uh, we also are going to need as I said a pallet fork so that is there color I'm good I'm Kind of going for a theme of sort of a, a zinc kind of color here, if I can. So closest to that, I think, is going to be metal. So buy that. Yes. Okay. And we're going to need a bale spike as well. Now, we do have a few options in so far as bale spikes go. Actually, I think what we'll do is under animals, we will get the Wazi. We'll get it for the front loader version. This is uh, this is a massively useful piece of kit. We know we're doing round bales, so we'll buy one of these. It's only two thousand three hundred for this as a bale shredder. Absolutely brilliant. So we're going to want some straw bales. We're going to want some uh, hay bales, and we want to go want some TMR, uh, and we're going to want some chicken feed. So that's what we're going to get. Uh, I think we will get a couple of things of chicken feed. And this is the beautiful thing about these pallets. We can buy chicken feed. Now this is something we want to avoid doing later is having to buy this chicken feed. Today we are going to be buying it. We'll buy two pallets of this uh, to keep our chickens going. Uh, we then also want a couple of pallets of TMR, which is, this is great as well. £800 for uh, a couple of pallets of TMR. This should get us going to start with. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. And then we want some bales as well. So bales, uh, we want, I think, a couple of hay bales to start us off. And then a couple of straw bales as well. So if this lot isn't enough for us, we can come back and get some more. For now, though, this, uh, I think, is going to fill this trailer. So... Yeah, we want to get uh, we want to get this trailer loaded up. So I'm going to move the wars the other way. And the reason why I got rid of the bale spike is because we got this wazi. It comes with a bale spike. We're not doing a lot of mixing of TMR and stuff at the moment. We're we're just uh, we're buying the pallets and we're feeding them that way until we can get up and running. It is going to be a, a case of of having to do that uh, just to keep our cows and things going. And my hope is that we'll be able to get uh, these onto the trailer and maybe just uh, stick the forks into one of these pallets and then strap it on. And that might hold the forks in position. But let's, uh, let's load up first. And I know some people will be going, oh, why don't you just use the pallet forks to skewer the bales? as well um i don't want to because that again that kind of is not it's not realistic 
not how you would you do this. I mean, we're going to be, we are going to be spiking the pails from the side uh, because of how they are on here. Whoa. This is always a pain. There we go. That's got that on. So strap that down. Um, but uh, there's not really a way around it at the moment. So that off. We're going to go all the way back with the Wazi on the front of our tractor. Uh, but for now, I want to switch to the front, drop that out, and get the bale spike out of it. Get our hay bales. So the hay bales, of course, are feed for our sheep. Yeah, we might be able to get the RZ on the back, and then uh, and then use a nice little new bit of kit to strap it down. All right, so put this on the back, push those forwards a bit with it, which is why I haven't strapped the bales down yet. Because I want to put this on the back and unhook it. And then we're going to buy and a misc, I think it is. Where are you? Where are you? There we go. This. So we'll try one of these. Uh, main color, we're going to get it in the Massey Red. Buy that. Yes. Okay. Back. back. Now this is just the greatest idea. Grab that, and you put this, whoa, ah, no. Shifted that, I don't want to shift that. Not left myself enough space to maneuver here. There we go, let's strap the bales down before we go any further. Yeah, there we go. Right, and then this goes on top if we can get it to. So we want to put this across the top of here, like so. If we can, yeah, go on, go on. Oh, it fell in. Right, let's uh, let's pick it up again. This is where we start flying, right. This is not the easiest of pieces of kit to get this on, but if we can be successful with it, there we go. It'll look a bit weird, but that in there means that that gets strapped down to the back of the thing. Perfect. And that means that uh, we've got a nice, safe, secure trailer to head back with. We can hook this up have the smaller bit on the front and uh, and it will look absolutely great so let's hook this up like this and we can head back to the farm Heading back into our farm, there are cows, both sides of the road. This is a nice sort of uh, bridge in their field, or over their field, a tunnel that they can go through, which I, I really like. The cows have a huge area to, to walk around here, which is brilliant. Uh, we are going to take this up here uh, because most of our animals, uh, their feed is gonna want to be on here. Uh, I'm gonna unload going to unload our shredder. I'm going to unload the... Uh, <coughs> yeah, so I'm going to unload the warriors. I'm going to unload uh, the bales. We'll take stuff straight off the pallets off here and then uh, do the pallets in a bit. Uh, so we're pretty near to where the 
well, we're right next to the sheep feeding area here. So let's undo this and then we can get all of those off. So we'll put our pallet forks just out the way over here for now. Switch over and take those off. Then what we'll be able to do is get the, uh, the sheep and the cows sorted with their bales. Um, and then we can, uh, we can get to feeding. So up on this. And out. And we want to pull, we, we really, really want to pull that uh, bit out of there. Let's grab that. Pull that out. There we go. We'll just put this off to the side for now. This is going to be something useful. We want to strap this down to our uh, trailer uh, pretty much every time we go up to, to collect a piece of machinery or a front load of piece of kit or something like that. Let's uh, drop the actual worms off. And then we can go and get some feed into our sheep. Downside to this uh, bale spike on the front of here is it's quite small. So I think when we actually come to start doing work with bales, uh, we're going to want uh, maybe a bigger bale spike. Uh, but this should at least get up. Wow, that's that's amazing. So that has they've taken almost all of that. Uh, wool will come in that side. We've got plenty of feed for the sheep for now. So we'll leave that uh, bale in there. We'll close those doors. And that's those doors making that sound. That is why we can't just uh, replace the sound on the map. We've got, we'd actually have to go round and find the uh, all the gates and change to the metal sound. So I don't know. I might have a fiddle with the map. I might see if I can fix the bits that annoy me. And then if they bring out an update, they bring out an update. And if they don't, then uh, then we've got a nice sounding map. Oop, there we go. Right. And um, we want to blow this from this side, I think. So connect that up. And it's in. And this is why I have the weights on the back of this. Uh, on the, the wheel weights on this. Makes it much, much easier. We should be blowing this in here somewhere. Is it in here or is it, or do I actually have to, I think I might actually have to go in on the other side because that is not coming up there to do it. So we're back out of here and go in, oh, the end gate. Again, yeah, creaking. Somebody's forgotten to go through before this is uh, finished and replace all of the uh, the gate sounds. Right, I'll take this in here. By the looks of it, we've got an area here. Yeah, there we go. So we'll blow straw in. And it looks like they're not going to take a full bale, maybe. Uh, we are, yeah, 14%. There we go. I want to check something in a moment just to see how well uh, this goes. But can we attach to the end of this? Because if, if, if it's basically driving there and blow straw roughly in like that, I think it'd be much better for us to do this by an end, rather, or by the end rather than by the uh, front. It does look like we can attach to the end of this. So let's uh, put this down. Come out and see if we can go around the end. Because that would be a better way for us to do it, I think. Up and round and in. Yeah, there we go. So we can we can blow uh, straw in like that, and that will make things easier. So we're going to put this with the other animal feed stuff over here. For now. 
And if you're wondering where I was, uh, where I put my water tank, that this is exactly where. Drop the whole thing off. Oh no, we don't want to drop the whole thing off because we've got two more bales to unload. So let's. Well, uh, yeah, let's 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 drop the whole thing off for now, uh, and uh, we'll go and get our bucket, which I've left down the bottom. So uh, got a fair whack to do. I should have left it up here, really. This is such a big yard on this map. It really is. And I love the fact that it's also on two levels. You know, you've got that, that upper level up there that you get to from here. That you can drive a tractor all the way around that level at the top. Which is just amazing. Right. So, let's get our cows fed then. And our chickens fed. And then we, uh, the next time we're going to be in a position where we can start looking at where we're going to expand the farm and, uh, and what fields we want to get. Uh, I think we probably, there's, all the fields around here are quite big. So what I think we're going to want to do is probably buy a big field and go, right, how can we chop this up? How can we, uh, how can we make this into several fields? And, uh, and farm it like that. Make it a little bit more manageable for the equipment we're going to have on here. Because we're not going to have anything more than a four meter a piece of equipment, I don't think. Right, which of these is going to load? Neither, apparently. No, there we go. The TMR is going into the bucket. There we go. We'll see how much of this uh, 1850 buckets of TMR these cows take and it should just be a case of coming into the feeding area here and going like that yep there we go in goes the feed and how has that done our cows wow yeah they are going to require all of this I think last 500 litres of the TMR let's see how full they are after this right that's all of it in uh that's got the cows up to half so we do need to yeah to do two days on the cows we pretty much need to get them to do uh half of that i looks like we don't have grazing on this map which is annoying because one of the things in seasons getting yourself started early on having grazing in here really really important for that on a start from scratch and, uh, and yeah, we don't have it. Uh, and then the chickens, I'm expecting the chickens to probably not take a full bucket. Uh, but we shall see. We'll put a full bucket in here. If we do have any, we can put it into our grain store and, uh, and just store it there for now. But they are down this way here to find their feeding trough. And that should mean all of our animals are nicely set up. And they're going to survive at least the first night with us. Uh, yeah, there's their feeding trough. So, I am presuming I just drive straight up to it. And do this. How much is that that they've got? Almost all of it. So, uh, wow. Yeah, they will take. We have to be careful because that happens. So the rest of that we will just get in here, like so. So yeah, 800. Uh, so the chickens at a time take a thousand liters. Uh, the rest of this can go into our grain store, which is just around here. And that will sort that out. Right, I will get the rest of this trailer unloaded and put away. Uh, but I think that's a pretty good start. We've got our animals set up. We've got our main farm. Okay, we've borrowed a fair amount of money. But that was always going to be the case. But I think we're done. We will be back on, uh, on Saturday with another episode from here. We will be getting our first fields and getting that set up. Um, for now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. 
And for all the latest videos from Virtual Pharma, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.